Welcome, church. Thank you for being here today. Before we get started, here are a few questions. Where's your head at right now? What's going on in your life? What are you feeling? What problems are you trying to solve? What are you focused on? Whatever you're going through, we want you to know it matters. If it's important to you, it's important to the God who loves you. That thing you're working on or working through is one of the ways God is working in you. But for right now, let's gather up those big ideas and those impossible problems. Let's set them all aside and set our minds on this one thing together. We are the Church of Jesus Christ, gathered here to give Him praise, to use this fellowship, singing, the message, to worship the Savior. Let's trust Him to hold everything else while we focus on celebrating His glory right now. Welcome to church. Justin and Christina, hurry up, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Clap for the couple, the newlywed. Come up here. The newlywed. Uh oh. You're not gonna match him? You're not gonna match him? You're not gonna match him? Now, Justin, 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 what's up? As your, as your, as your pastor and your counselor, don't you ever do that again. You walk up there with your wife. You don't let her walk by herself. Praise God. There you go. I know, but he, I don't want him to jump the stage while you're walking alone. If nothing else, he should get down and pick you up. Praise God. How strong is your back? Huh? Huh? How strong is your back? Huh? Get on, get on your belly. Get on your belly real quick. Get on your belly. Come on, lay down, lay down. Lay down on your stomach. Lay down on your stomach. On your stomach. On your stomach. Get on his back. You ready? Get on his back. Stand on. No, no. You stand on his back. Come on. Stand. Come on. Stand. You are the foundation of this marriage. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Come on down. All right. Just making sure. Making sure that you understand your role. That you are. You are the foundation. You are what she stands on. Praise God. He not, he not, no, no, he, he's built to carry you. The husband is built to carry the wife. Praise God. When God made the marriage, he made the man first because the man is the foundation of the family. Praise God. And the foundation must be strong. Praise God. A marriage can't stand on a man who don't have a strong back for his woman and his family. Glory be to God. And you got a strong back because you come from this anointing. Praise God. Praise God, you just, when she stood on your back, it was generations standing on your back. Your children and your children's children stood on your back just now. Generation, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That ain't my message, boy. I'm ready to go on that, though. I can preach on that. Praise God. You are the foundation. She the first floor. Praise God. Hallelujah. My God, today. Boy, when you got word in you, everything's a message. Everything a message. I want to talk to you guys about Target to Seed Sunday. Target to Seed Sunday. You got it? Is your mic on? Yeah. It's on? Okay. Turn them up a little bit. Turn them. You guys got that over there? Somebody? So let me tell y'all, let me tell you guys what transpired. You got it? If not, you're going to have to use There you go. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. See, you were a good trainer because you left your post and somebody else covered. You got it. Thank you. So, back in April, this couple came to me as we was counseling before marriage. And they said, we need a vehicle. And I said, you know what to do. So we'll see. Praise God. And they sold a targeted seed in April. And in August, what happened? Praise God. So going back to um, 
was in April, um, there was a car that, there was a second car for me in the front, and so the car wasn't what the person had made it out to be at first, so, so, um, we sold the seat, and then, um, a couple of weeks ago, we received an increase that will cover the amazing deposit for the car. Hallelujah. So, like, this isn't clout or anything, like, when the pastor said, this is not a gimmick, it is real, we serve, we come early, we give repeatedly, and we do it from the bottom of our hearts, because that's what we do. Praise God. And so, man, we tied right off of it. So, yeah. it went straight back into the ministry, went straight back to God. Hallelujah. It's not all of ours, but, you know, when you talk about targeted seed and sowing seed, like, there is a fruition, there is a harvest that comes, but it's seed time and harvest. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So celebrate them. Praise God. This newlywed, they're doing an amazing job. Thank you guys for your testimony. Because people, the ministry, praise God, come on, give it up for them. The ministry needs to hear this young couple just got married a few weeks ago, and God blessed them with a, an amazing harvest for their car. Second car. They already have a car. So now God has blessed them with a great increase for a second car and there's more to come praise God I love you boy I love you daughter praise God listen targeted seed what we shared is money takes on the identity of whatever you give it okay and so what we need to do is next Sunday you guys should have been praying and asking God what it is you should sow based on your desired results Okay, and so it's not about what you think or what you feel. You go to God in prayer and have God answer you. And then what I shared was whatever God tells you, he is responsible for. You follow? So you go to prayer and next Sunday, we're going to come with our targeted seed. Again, your targeted seed is not your tithes and your offerings. That's not it. Your targeted seed is independent from that. Amen. All right. Now, family, I got to have a conversation with us about some things, all right? We are um, about to embark on a new year, okay? Now, just so you guys know, um, we don't follow the, the regular calendar. We follow the calendar of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, okay? Um, I believe that the reason why many people fail in uh, New Year's resolution and different things of that nature is because they're not following the right calendar, okay? September 17th is the new year. That's the heat on the Hebrew calendar. September 17th is the new year. Okay, it's Rosh Hashanah. All right. So that's the that's the new year on God's time clock. And we've been doing that as a ministry ever since we started. We never uh, uh, celebrate on December 31st because we are already in the new year on the 17th. Okay. And so every new year, God speaks to me, and he gives me an assignment for the ministry. And so what I want to do is give you guys the assignment for the ministry so that you guys can see the vision and we all be on the same page. Because a house divided will not stand. Amen? So it's, it's, it's important that we all have the same vision because as a ministry, it's important that we all have the same identity. Right? Because there's a certain identity or certain spirit or characteristics that governs over each ministry, all right? So I just want to set the stage for what's about to happen here. Now, as I'm talking to people, I'm looking because that's what I do. I give eye contact, okay? So if you hear something that's troublesome, I'm not pointing a finger at anyone. I'm just talking. Because when you set order... There's some things that may be uncomfortable to people, right? But I'm not the one to preach at you or talk about you from this stage. I will come to you and pull you over and say, can we have a conversation, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just setting the order, okay? Let me ask you, we are a family. We are in relationship. Am I in a safe space with you? Do I have your permission to openly speak and you not be offended if something is said that you may not like or understand? And if you don't like or understand it, would you come and talk to me so I can give you more clarity? Even online as well. Praise God. Thank you. Okay. 
What I want to see for this ministry moving forward is, number one, I want us to see, I want to see us give our visitors the most warmest welcome they ever received. When someone visits for the first time, they should not feel as if they were outsider. They should feel so much love and warmth that they want to come back based on that hug, that smile, that embrace, that shaking of the hands. We, we got to embrace the people who come here so that they can feel the love of God because you may be the only God that person encounters. So when, when, when someone stands up, I want to see five, six bodies tripping over each other just to hug that person. How you doing today? God loves you. I'm so happy that you're here. God bless you. That person may need that because that person may be contemplating suicide because they don't believe they're loved. You got it? So I want us moving forward, please, guys. Let's give the warmest welcome to our first-time visitors, please. All right? We are family. We want people to feel that family love. Okay, next. Um, <clears throat> I was, I was, I was uh, at, a, at a pastor's conference for two days uh, on Thursday and Friday. And as I drove back, the Lord spoke to me about the theme of the year. And so I was watching uh, my spiritual father on TV, uh, Bill Winston. And I was watching him. And as I wrote down our, our theme for the new year, my God, man, my spiritual father said the exact scripture. I mean, and he said it three times. He said the same scripture three times. I, I looked at the TV and I said, God, you are so amazing. I mean, just to confirm what our theme is for this year. And so this is important because when you embrace this theme, you're going to see where we're going, okay? Our theme for this year is, this is the year of occupying. Luke, Luke 19, 13 says, occupy until I come now occupy means to advance and hold be productive be about your father's business okay so so for the new year our theme is we are going to occupy until he comes praise God and it was confirmed three times so as a ministry if God confirmed that which he did three times and I, I can go into teaching on that but I don't I'm not going to do that that means that he has established this ministry to occupy. So everyone in this ministry, you are commissioned of God to occupy. That means what? Come on, advance and hold. Come on, say advance and hold. Be productive. Be about my father's business. That's what we're going to do for this new year. We're going to be, we're going to advance and hold. That means where you are now, God's going to catapult you to another level and not only is he going to launch you to a new territory you're going to hold that position praise God you're going to you're going to convert everyone in that sphere into a kingdom citizen man I'm so excited about this right here three times he confirmed it praise God okay all right so also I want us guys to do a better job of, invi of inviting people to the ministry you guys who come here, you guys know that, that I believe you guys believe we're anointed. We're doing great things here. Let's get some more bodies in the seats. Because it's all about evangelizing. You got it? Okay. I want to talk about something that some people may find uh, tough. And I, I'm going to do this for the next two weeks because we need to uh, continue doing this. If you have been coming to this ministry for a while... If you have been tuning in online for a while, and if you are feeding <clears throat> off of the manna that God gives us every week, why have you not partnered with us? I'm just asking the question. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking that question because we're looking for numbers. That don't matter to me. But it's, it's dishonorable. It is, it, is, it is dishonorable to come to a table and eat and eat, and eat, and not connect. That's dishonorable. And what I want to say is, you should not be comfortable with dishonor 
to the point where conviction don't change you. Now again, I'm not looking for numbers. I'm not into that. I'm, I'm really not. But if you, <clears throat> if you are feeding off of this manner, then why haven't you partnered to make a difference in the world with this ministry? So if, if, if this is not the ministry where you want to partner with, then I want to ask you to go find a ministry to partner with. Because we're not here for that. We're here for people who are serious about connection and making some things happen in their lives, in this ministry, and in the world. We're not here for people who are not committed because this ministry is committed. We are committed in this ministry for your wellness and your betterment. So if you come here, you sit week after week, you tune in week after week, and if you have not partnered yet, <clears throat> I want to let you know that we are not the ministry for you. We're not. Because if we were, then you would have partnered. So what I'm saying is you're free. Go somewhere, find a ministry and partner. But it's a disservice for me, this ministry, and for you to stay in a place where you don't see the value. And I'm asking for you to leave if you're not a partner, if you don't, if you don't want to partner after being here for this amount of time because you, don't, you, 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 you would abuse what you don't respect. You, find, you, you, you found the grocery store to go to. You found the movie theater. You found the mall. You found the, the beauty parlor. You found the person to do your nails. You found, you found everything you found that you value, and yet you have not found the church. So go find one. If this is not the church for you, if you're sitting here for an, an extension amount of time, and you have not partnered, then go find a church to partner with. It doesn't make sense for, for, pe for people to come here week after week and week and tune in week after week and don't see the value of saying, let me partner. You, we can't advance with people who are not partnering. You're not connected. We want connections. Praise God. Okay. Lastly, I want to speak to you about this here. Um, It is dishonorable to come here week after week and tune in week after week and not tithe. It, it, is this, it, it, is, it is dishonorable to come here week after week, tune in week after week and not tithe. Now, I want to be clear of who I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to anyone who has employment and God blesses them financially. So if you don't have employment, I'm not talking to you. Am I clear? If God is blessing you financially and you're not tithing in this ministry and you come to the table and you eat and you tune in online and you get the word and you tune off, that is dishonorable. Just as you don't go to a restaurant and, and, and order the, the best meal and say thank you, if you don't do that naturally, my brother and my sister, you cannot do that spiritually. It is dishonorable to come here. And let me say this to you. If you serve in this ministry, if you're an usher, if you're a greeter, if you are in the media team, we love what you guys do. But that's not tithing. If you are serving in this ministry, we love you. We appreciate you. But if you don't love us enough to financially support the work of God, then you can't serve no longer. Just sit, get the word, and when you're ready, let's, let's revisit. Because I'm not going to be connected to people who don't respect the anointing. Not only that, not only that, not only that. I want to make sure that you're not walking in a curse. Now, let me tell you what's the curse. Dishonor. Dishonor is a curse. You Listen, listen. You come here and you got employment and God blesses you financially, even online, and you say, I'm going to tune off. But then you will go and spend $150 at a restaurant. You would feed yourself naturally and don't support the supernatural feeling that you're getting. If you are in this ministry and you are not a tither, you may want to leave. 
I'm setting order. No, no, I love you. I love you. But listen, 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 listen. The reason why I'm saying that is, again, let me be clear. I'm talking to those who have employment. So if you're not employed, I'm not talking to you. But a tithe is 10% on whenever God increases you. Whenever you're increased, you are supposed to come. Put it up there, please. Give me that slide. Give me the tithe slide, please. Whenever, you, whenever God increases you, you are supposed to come. What is the tithe? Okay, it's simple. A tithe is a tenth of a person's income or property given in the support of the church. That's what it is. The word tithe, as well as Hebrew and the Greek, it means the same thing. In both languages, in Hebrew and in Greek, and in English, it means a tenth. That means that if God gives you a dollar, you are supposed to come here and bless the ministry with how much? Ten cents. It ain't that hard. But it is dishonorable. Listen, we are four years young. And what I need to do is I need to give us an identity of who we are. Okay? Two things we are. We are a ministry of honor and excellence. That's it. I want people to... When they, when they hear fit for the kingdom, I want two words to come to mind. Ready? Honor and excellence. Now, what is honor? Honor is doing the right thing when the lights are on, when the lights are off. That's honor. That's it. Honor is doing to me what you want done to you. How would you like if you owned the restaurant? And folks came in and ate real good and said, God bless you. That was great. Peace. You can't stay in business that way. How do you think a ministry can survive if you find more value in Cabo than you do at here where we are feeding you something for your soul? No one should put God first. And if, you, if, if this offends you, I love you. This ain't the ministry for you. I mean, that's, I'm, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Go somewhere where you can connect and feel good about. If this is too much, I love you. Go, go somewhere else. It's fine. Praise God. And listen, I'm not offending people because I want, to, I want you to be free. Because here's the reality. If you are comfortable with doing wrong, then I want to stop that. It's wrong. And someone may say, the gospel is free. No, it isn't. The gospel is not free because these lights cost money. Microphone costs money. And Jesus died. That won't free. It costs him to get you to where you are. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. It's, it's not that I, I, nobody's trying to, so, so let, let me say this. How many of you guys came from a church, a, pri a previous church? Or how many of you guys been to church before? Okay, let me, let me, let me do this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, sit down. Let me, let me do this. <clears throat> Online, listen to me. Don't tune me out just yet. Don't tune me out just yet. I want to apologize. I want to apologize to anyone here who have experienced hurt in the church. Okay, I'm, I'm hearing from God. I want, to apo I, I want to apologize to anyone who feels they can't trust a vessel before them because they were wounded, they was abused and mistreated. I want to apologize to you. Listen, that the person who lied to you, the person who manipulated you, the person who abused you may not apologize but God is allowing me to do it for that person. Okay? Don't let what someone did interrupt what you should do according to God. Now, I want to tell you this, that I'm not here for nothing else other than your betterment. I love you. And if you can't see that, then something is wrong. Like, I really love you guys. Okay? So, so, so if you can't feel that, then I'm, I'm not really connecting with you. Okay? I'm not here for nothing else. I don't want anything from you. I want to be a blessing to you. I do. I really, really do. Okay? So, so, so anyone here who have experienced any hurt, I, I don't, I don't want to call it church hurt. I want to call it I want to call it a hurt from the church because church hurt to me don't it, it don't it, it don't exist there's not there's not job hurt there's not school hurt 
It's not library hurt. It's not mall hurt. It's hurt. So it's not church hurt. Someone did something that wasn't connected to God. That person hurt you. If they did that, I want you to stand up real quick. If you have a, if you have a hurt from a, a hurtful experience from a church, I want you to stand up real quick. Praise God. See, this is God. Even online, praise God. If you're holding on for, to a hurt that you experienced from a church or a ministry, if you're holding on to an a, a impactful moment that messed you up, I want you to stand. Some, there's two more people that need to stand up in here. There's two more people that need to stand in here. Come on. Listen, don't sit on this hurt. There you go. That's one more. Praise God. Am I hearing from God? I want you to take the hurt that you experienced from that church experience. The person who betrayed you, the person who did not cover you, the person who did not love you, the person who did not die for you. I want you to take that, and I, I feel your pain. I feel it right. I'm so feeling, I'm so feeling the pain for you. That person disappointed you. It wasn't God. Bring some tissues up here. It was a person who was not connected. If you see someone going through something, embrace that person next to you. If someone is weeping, someone is having a moment, embrace the person next to you. Find someone to embrace right now. Because in this ministry, we're not going to hurt you. I promise you, I would die before I hurt you. This is, this is serious stuff, right? This, this is deliverance. This is the reason why people don't experience what they should experience. Embrace, embrace the person who's weeping, the person who's hurt. Come on, embrace her. Embrace each other. Come on, embrace, come on. Get out your seat and embrace that person. Father, these people here who have experienced hurt in the church, Father, we pray for their healing now. Embrace this couple right here. Embrace this couple. Jason, come on. Embrace Jason. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Embrace them. Embrace them both. Come on. Embrace them both. Praise God. Father, the people here who are experiencing hurt, come on. Embrace him. Embrace him. The people here who are experiencing hurt that happened in the church, Father, we ask you to heal their hearts from that moment. Heal their heart from from, from the, the person who was insensitive and not connected. Father, we remove the hurt and pain. We remove the burden that they've been carrying for, for the longest of time. And we thank you, Father God, that you would go into that deep space, that hard space, that dark space, and bring your light to it. Father, remove the stone in their heart and make it a heart of flesh right now in the name of Jesus. Release that person. Come on. Come on. Release the person who hurt you in the church. Bless that person now. The person who hurt you in the church, bless that person. Mention that person's name and say, I bless you. Mention that individual's name. Come on, mention that person's name. Come on, Taryn. Come on, Jason. Mention the person's name who hurt you in the church and bless them right now. Say, I release it. Come on, say, I release the hurt. Come on, I release the pain. I will not hold any hurt any longer. I am free. My relationship. It's too important to have it hindered based on something that was not supposed to happen. God, you did not do this. It was a satanic attack. No weapon, though, formed against me prospered. I'm here because I am victorious. Come on, I am not a victim. I am victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't this wonderful? Isn't that great how God moves? Praise God. Freedom. Praise God. Okay. Give me my scripture. Give me my tithing scripture, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11 to 12. This is good. Going pretty good. Praise God. Impromptu, too, but we're making it happen. Look what it says here. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much for we if we reap a material harvest from you? If others have this right of support from you, 
Shouldn't we have it all the more? Can I read that again? If we, if, if we have sown, look, this is Paul speaking, the apostle. Let's go to verse 11, please. Verse 11. I'm going to read it again. Look what it says. If we have sown a spiritual seed among you. See, I'm not just telling you what I want to say. It's scriptural. I'm, ba- I'm giving you Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. 11 to 12. Uh, 9 11, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11 to 12. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, am I sowing spiritual seed among you? Online, am I sowing spiritual seed among you? Look what it says. Is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? So you're so I'm sowing a seed, and you're supposed to give me a harvest for what I sow. It's a law. Now watch this, if the mall, if the cell phone company, if the mortgage company, if the, if, if the trip, the vacation, the restaurant has your support, shouldn't we have it the more? I'm just asking a question. This is, this is, I'm not making this up. It's scriptural. It's in your Bible. Look at it. Go to your Bible. It's the law. Praise God. If you need an envelope, raise your hands. If you, if, you have a, if you have employment, if you got a paycheck and it came your way, then 10% of that is supposed to come back to the storehouse. If you need an envelope, raise your hands. You can also text the word GIVE to 804-348-8300. You can text the word GIVE to 804-348-8300. Also on Cash App, dollar sign fit kingdom on cash app dollar sign fit kingdom and also you can donate directly from your bank account fftkgm.org you go there and uh give directly from your bank account i'm getting you guys ready for next week we're not just doing this we're doing this to see results All right, so those online and those here, take your offerings. Actually, stand with your offering. Everyone stand with your offerings. Those who are sowing, stand with your offering. And your tithes and your offering. All right, you ready? Hold it up in the air. Say, Father, here is my tithe. Here is my offering. I am, I am sowing based on obedience and sacrifice. Father... You are not a man that you lie. Based on the law of seed time and harvest, I am sowing into fertile ground. And I thank you that my return comes back expedited with interest. I cover my offering under the blood of Jesus. No demonic activity will influence my results. My results at minimum is a hundredfold thank you jesus for giving seed to the sower thank you that men give back to me good measure pressed down shaken together running over i am in the overflow the lord is my shepherd therefore i want for nothing this offering I give to Jesus, who is my high priest. Jesus, take my tithe and my offering and present it to the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for 12 baskets in return. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, pass your envelopes around. Praise God. And I'm going to release the children to Children's Church and Teen's Church. Leave your cell phones with your parents, please. I'm going to get into this teaching, powerful teaching. I'm going to ask everyone here and those online to do me a solid favor. If you don't mind, would you please press the share button? Because I'm about to give you some fire based on the wisdom of God. 
than I've been getting. And Father, bless our children. Bless the sanctuary for our children. We thank you. We have an entire sanctuary for our children. That's 35,000 square feet big just for our children. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love you guys so much. Praise God. Come on. Come on. We're going to children's church. Praise God. Holy Spirit, I yield to your wisdom. I yield to your counsel. I thank you for your revelation. None of me and all of you. Bless me with your anointing. Mm. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to your sight, O Lord. For you are my rock and my redeemer. We welcome the spiritual gifts. We welcome miracles, signs, and wonders, and your angels. My hand is on fire. So this is powerful. Praise God. We thank you for the gifts of prophecy and just everything here. Deliverance. Fire's on me. Praise God. I feel it. Praise God. In Jesus' name, amen. Did I ask you guys to press the share button? Have you guys shared? Everyone here and online? Praise God. Share it. Okay, listen. So we've been speaking for weeks on wisdom. Praise God. And I'm going to tell you that we are going to be a ministry moving forward on wisdom. Today's topic is titled, Are You Listening? Today's topic is titled, <clears throat> Are You Listening? Let me see what you got for that. I see that. I like that. Are you listening? Give it up for our media team. Praise Woo! God. Praise God. Let's go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, please. In the New King James Version. I'm skipping as I feel, Justin. I'm not going in the order, so you guys stay with me. It says here, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, in the New King James Version. It says here, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Amen. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. So I want to establish something with you guys here. Is that God does not change. Say God, God. Does, not does not change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right. The reason why I'm starting here is because some people believe that God no longer speaks. Okay, some people believe that speaking to the saints isn't something that happened in the Old Testament. Okay, but either God is true or he's making a mistake here because God says, I do not change. So I want to establish to you that God is speaking to you. Because if he spoke in the Old Testament, he's speaking right now. You got it? So it's important that you understand that God is still speaking and at some point you must recognize his voice in order to flow in the wisdom of God. All right? Now, I'm going to prove something to you right now. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 22, please, in the New King James Version. It says here, Then the Lord said to who? Moses, right? Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, Look what he said, okay? You have seen that I have taught with you from where? So God is speaking to you right now from where? So God is speaking to you from where you are from a heaven perspective. Say wisdom. So, so, so your earthly perspective is not what God is talking to you about. He, he says here that you see me. Talk to you from where? So God is talking to you right now from heaven. The question is, do you see him talking to you? Because Moses and the children of Israel were able to see God talk to them from where? So you got to be in tune to see God and hear God speak to you from where? So God is speaking to you from a heaven's perspective. So you may be not well in your body, you may be having some issues, you may be having some problems, but God is not speaking to you from that perspective. God is speaking to you from heaven's perspective. 
So it's important that you understand what heaven's perspective is. You got it? Okay. Now, how can you get heaven's perspective? If he's speaking, how do you get heaven's perspective? You have to listen. He's speaking. But you won't get the perspective of God if you're not. In order to understand what God is saying, you must be able to. Okay, now let me ask you a question. When you're listening, what are you listening with? Which ear? Not that one. Not this one. It ain't this one. He's not talking to this. He's talking to your what? He's talking, he's talking to your spirit. See, let me, let me say something to, to you. I, uh, back in 2000, 2004, I went to heaven. I was transitioned to heaven. I don't know if you guys know my story or not. Real quick, I, I'll share my testimony. I was in the car driving, and it was a convertible uh, BMW. Um, I had my top down. I was, I was looking. I, I left church, a church service. I was looking uh, to heaven. And I was thinking the word thank you. I was thinking the word thank you. And, and automatically, God took me out of the car. Not my body, but my spirit. Okay, I wasn't dead. I'm having a heavenly encounter. And God took me out of the car. And I am standing in heaven right before the presence of this brilliant light. And the only way... I could describe this light to you is this way. If you were to take the most brilliant stone that this world has and you put it next to the sun, it don't equate to the glory. It, it, the, the, the presence of God before me was so heavy that it could have killed me. But it was inviting. And for that moment in time, which seems to be... I, there was, there's no time there. And I'm standing before the Lord, and as I'm standing there, he says to me, give it up. I said, give what up? He said, anything that will distract you, anything that will take you away from me, get rid of it now. I was, I was an adulterer. I was in the music industry. I was doing things that wasn't right. And so God had to give me a visitation, because if not, I was going straight to hell. I wasn't going to stop. I was making too much money and having too much fun to stop. Okay? So God loved me so much that he took me out. And, and, and so in heaven, uh, Lord, have mercy. There, it, wasn't, it wasn't mouth moving. It was, it was me thinking something and God answering me at the speed of thought. So, so when I was before the Lord, it wasn't me him talking I was thinking something, and right before I finished my thought, he was answering it. So I was thinking something, and he answered it. And so it was, it was, it was an exchange of thoughts. And so what he did was he spoke to me in the spirit by the spirit. You follow me? Okay. So, so when I said okay to what he commanded me to do, I was back in the car again. The light turned green, and I'm driving, and I'm like, what in the world was that? True story. True story. And so, and so when that happened, I walked away from everything I knew because it was a divine encounter. I walked away from money. I walked away from cars. Everything. Because one, one moment in the presence of God would change everything. It was a divine, divine encounter. And so to hear from God, this is what it looks like. You're not going to hear from God. Sometimes you hear from God in an audible voice. That happens. But for the most part, it's going to be a spirit-to-spirit -spirit conversation. So don't wait for the knock on the door. That, that's rarity. When God speaks to you, every single time you can believe it, it's going to be a spirit-to-spirit -spirit conversation. Right? So you have to have your spirit right to receive what God is saying. You follow? Okay. Let's go to Proverbs Chapter 1, verse 5, please, in the Amplified Version. Are you guys checking with me? This is good? Okay. All right. Look what it says. The wise, 
will what? Will hear. So if you want wisdom, if you want wisdom, what do you need to do? Come on, say, if I want wisdom, I must hear. Okay, so listen. In order to get wisdom, family, what you must do is have an have a ear to hear. If you don't have an ear to hear, then you won't have wisdom. So it says, the wise will hear, listen, and increase their what? See, when you hear, you're going to get more information to give you what you need to succeed in this life. It's to, see, hearing is not just for hearing. It's to increase what you know. And see, the more you know, the more you grow. You got it? Okay, so the wise will hear and increase their learning, and the person of understanding will acquire wisdom and counsel and what else? Skill. So listen, once you learn, you're going to have understanding, okay? And from understanding, the Bible says, you're going to acquire skill. You're going to acquire skill. So let me tell you what that looks like. You are a high school dropout. You come from a broken home. You don't have a degree. And for some reason, they hire you and put you to be a janitor at this company. And while you're in the office cleaning, you overhear a conversation of a problem. And you say, sir, can I talk to you for two minutes? And he may say, not right now, keep cleaning. And you smile. And then you say, sir, I really have to tell you something. What do you want to say? I can solve that problem. How can you solve it? You are a high school dropout. You come from a broken home. You got this record. You've been abused. You don't have insight. But what you have is the ear to hear. And so because you have an ear to hear, God would give you the skill needed to solve that problem. Say wisdom. That's what it is. So God would give you the play-by-play -play action on how to fix something that you're not qualified to fix. But he placed you in darkness so that you can bring light to the situation. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. So he will place you, and you're saying, I'm, I'm over here cleaning these dirty toilets, and people just doing stuff in here, and he placed you there for a reason. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Clean the toilet, listen, as if you're cleaning it for God. That's right. You are cleaning not a man's toilet, you're cleaning God's toilet. You follow me? You keep your attitude right, Talk to me, Holy Spirit. Yesterday, I was in Walmart. He just reminded me of something. That's why I, I see what's going on here. There was a man, an elderly man, in Walmart yesterday who worked there, and he was having a time. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to give them the bare minimum. And you know, I'm not, and I'm looking at this, and then the other man with him, that's right. Don't, don't work hard. And I'm looking at this saying, boy, the blind lead the blind. One man saying something stupid, and the other man is saying something stupider. So stupid plus stupid equals? Stupid. It's multiplied. Stupidity. And I'm looking at this man saying, boy, gray hair don't make you wise. Age don't make you wise. Because he, he was hearing something, but it wasn't sound counsel. And I was going to say something, and, I, and the Spirit of God said, you don't want to fight that one. <laughs> no, I was going to say, sir, sir, I, I really believe that if you change your attitude, you know. But there is a saying that you can't, you can't teach an old dog, and, 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 and that, that's not true all the time. But in that case, oh, it was the truth. Yeah, in that case, he was an old dog. And he was all tricked out. He had no more tricks in him. He was flipping and flopping and 
He done flips. I mean, so I just looked and said, praise God. But it grieved me. And it grieved me because he's walking around life thinking that what I'm going to do is give a person the bare minimum. That's not, that's not wise. Because watch me on this. Bare minimum plus bare minimum equals bare minimum. So he's looking, listen to this, here, here go wisdom, okay? Say wisdom. He's looking for maximum but giving. Every seed does what? Reproduces what? Are you catching me? I'm somebody recording me? Every seed reproduces after its own kind. So I'm looking at him with gray hair saying that you are going to get older and older and older and dumber and dumber and dumber. Why? Because he can't hear. Because, listen, do you not believe that God is telling him, hey, do a better job? No, let me ask you, do you not believe God is saying, hey, don't clean that way. Clean like you're cleaning for me. So what he's doing is he's rejecting the counsel of God. That's a dangerous thing, isn't it? And you're looking for production while you are at someone else's job site being unproductive. So he's really stealing from the boss. Therefore, he would not inherit what he's looking for because he's a thief. Why? The man didn't hire you for bare minimum. The man hired you for what? Maximum results. Won't you do something where you can stand out, where they can say, man, I see her value. I see his value. Let me move you through the ranks and take you from cleaning toilets to managing a department somewhere. I want to give life skills. You should never, you should never, you should always inquire of God. Never make a move without first asking God. You know why? Because you need his what? Say instructions. You need God's instructions. God, should I marry him? Don't marry him because he looks good. Oh, I love him. Oh, he's fine. Oh, he got money. Oh, she got a bad body. She got a bad attitude, too. She's beautiful. You ain't seen the ugly yet. Have you seen ugly to the point where beauty disappears? I'm just having some fun with y'all today. See, no, 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 because, listen, listen, listen. listen. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta inquire of God. Because you need to hear his instructions. Let me tell you why. Well, let me finish reading this. You should always inquire of God. One instruction from Holy Spirit will give you the, say, strategy. Needed to succeed. The reason why you want to hear is because when he talks to you, he's not just saying A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. He's giving you strategies for success. That's the reason why you just don't jump in the car and drive somewhere. You punch in where you're going. Why? You don't know where you're going. That's good. That's good. Somebody tell you, meet me so-and-so. And if you don't know where you're going, you're going to put it on your phone, on Google Maps always, or even in your car. Why? Because you don't know where you're going. So you're going to tell me, say wisdom, you're going to trust your navigation system more than Holy Spirit? Now, sometimes the navigation system gets you lost. They, they take you around. Yeah. Holy Spirit will never lose you. Yeah. He won't lose you. If he tell you, if he tell you go around the block ten times and then go left, you better listen. You better do it. Why? Because that's the strategy needed to succeed. A wise person hears. If you want wisdom, are you hearing? And when you hear, you confuse the enemy. Why? 
Because he can't hear what you hear. He can hear what you say. Oh, let me say. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. You know he's talking to me, right? Okay. 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 So say, say, say wisdom. Say Holy Spirit. I love your presence. You're here. Talk to me. Okay, so Holy Spirit says to you, okay, he says, Sharia, I want you not to go to work in the same direction that you've been going for the last two years. I know you're used to going that way, but don't go that way. This time, I want you to go the longer way, which means it's going to take you 20 minutes out the way. I ain't going that 20 minutes. See, when you did that, you told the devil what God told you, and now he's strategizing versus a new route. When you told God what you weren't going to do, you told the devil the strategy for the new way of success. So now the devil is calling his demons and saying, okay, guys, come here, come here, come here, hurry up, come here, come here, come here. Here's the new plan. She's not going as we thought. She got frustrated, and she's disobeying God. So I heard her, and now God told her to go the other way. So go over there. Hurry up. She's going that way. Hurry. Go that way. Instead of saying, okay, a wise person hears. Okay, I hear you, Lord. Satan say, where's she going? Shh. What's going on? Shh. He don't know. He's looking like, help, help. Say something, Sharia. Say something. Give me a hint. Where are you going? And as long as your mouth is shut, he don't know where you're going. He can't stop the strategy plan. But when you open your mouth, you give Satan the indication of the strategy. A wise person hears. That's some revelation, ain't it? Stop talking so much. I hear you. Shh. Sometimes you got to talk to decree a thing, but sometimes you got to move in silence. A wise person hears. Lord, should I should I speak this out or should I keep this between me and you? Praise God. You are in partnership with God. Therefore, you must seek his voice to know what his plans are for your life. God is the quarterback and you are the wide receiver. You would never be the quarterback. Not with him. God, because you don't know the play. Boy, I tell you, you don't know the play. See, what you want to do is you want to get into the huddle. Keep your mouth shut when you're in the huddle. You better, you better get into that huddle. Can I get my football fans up in here? Where ball at when I need them? Where is rolling ball at when I need them? Come on, come on. Come on, I need my Dallas fans to stand up. I need my 49ers fans to stand up. I need, come on, come on. I need my Redskins fans to stand up. Come on, come on. I need my Green Bay Packers fans to stand up. Come on, I need my Miami Dolphins fans to stand up. Praise God. Come on, come on. My Oakland Raiders, where you at? The Giants, where you at? Where, where the Eagles, where you at? Now, I need you to get into the huddle. But why you in the huddle? Do me a favor. Hush. Because you're not the quarterback. You are the wide receiver. And you got to get with Jesus and say, what does say at the Lord? I want you to go wide. And when you hit that 40, I want you to break. Why? Because the devil think you're going straight. But I want you on the, the break. I'm going to catch you. See, see, you're going to run. 
You're not catching me, woman of God. What you doing? You better, you better, somebody better catch me. Who, who recording me on this right here? Praise God. I need this for the daggone, uh, come on now. You better, you're not, you, all right, praise God. All right. So, so the devil think, the devil think, the, the devil think that you're going you gonna to come off right and you're going to go straight. But when you hit that 40, boom, you're going to hit him right. See, 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 see. And when you hit him right, they, 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 go, they go the ball right there. You catch it. And then you go score. It. Praise God. Come on. You go in there high. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Come on. Praise God. Huh? 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 So you got to be able to understand your positioning. Why receiver? See, but people who, who are not wide receiving, they're quarterbacking. You know why? They're not hearing. So now you go into the huddle telling Jesus what you're going to do while Satan is hearing what you're saying. And Jesus say, it's not the plan. But because that's your will, my hands are tied. Have it your way. And you're wondering why every pass is being blocked or intercepted. It's because a wise person hears. Whew. A wise person don't tell him what to do. You inquire of the Lord. What should I do, quarterback? Here is your wide receiver. Whew. Too busy listening to that song, that poison conversation. Girl, if I was you, I would do that. Don't listen to girl if I was you. Listen to girl the Bible says. Man, if I was you, don't listen to that. Listen to the steps of a good man is order of the Lord and he delights in all his ways. Listen to that. Listen to what God is saying and not what the voice of the enemy is saying through somebody who says they love you. Praise God. Y'all good? I'm almost done. I got a lot to give you, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let this flow to next week because we're going to be on wisdom for a while. What you should do is be home studying. T, come here, T. Come here. Come up here. Come on, Johanna. Come on, Chris. You guys come up here on the stage. I'm hearing from God. Holy Spirit's talking to me. This is all downloads. I'm not, I'm not even, I, I haven't touched anything yet, so y'all got, I got a lot to give you. But I'm not doing all that today. Come on, come on stage. Praise God. All right, come here. All right, come here. All right. So, this is what listening sounds, starts like. It starts right here. It starts with, with T. But listening isn't always easy. So it goes from this size, and it grows just a little bit. Not a whole lot. It, it's, a, it's a little growth between listening here and listening here. And most of us start here. Well, all of us start here, rather. But most of us are right here. And the more time you spend hearing from God, the more you will grow to this. And this is what I'm hearing, because he's talking to me. This is not a person. This is a tower. She's receiving the signals.
She's a person receiving signals, but it's on a low wattage because it's a small tower. So the tower increases just a little bit, and she can now receive more of a signal. But when you are fully persuaded, when your hearing is supposed to be where your hearing is supposed to be, you become an enormous tower where the signal is so strong that you hear everything. This is where the body of Christ needs to be. You need to be a towering figure in your hearing. Yes, Many of us are here in our hearing and here in our hearing. But God says the only way for you to get what I have for you is you must have a tower that's so big to hold the capacity of my information. Hey. This is what it looks like. And so we have to grow from this. But the only way to do it, I'm going to give you some instructions in a minute. But thank you all for this, okay? I needed to have this example as he gave it to me. Clap for these ladies here. Now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you seven points to, to increase your hearing. Praise God. Thank you all. I'm going to give you all seven points to increase your hearing. Because if you don't hear from God and you, I'm going, not yet, you're moving a little bit too fast. But thank you. I'm going to give you all seven points to increase your hearing. And when you do this, you got to follow the instructions, okay? All right? Okay? All right? Okay. Crazy. Okay. Let me see something. Your hearing, other slide, your hearing is imperative when it comes to wisdom. All right? There are too many voices fighting for your hearing. There are too many voices fighting for your hearing hearing. You must be skilled to silence those voices. And, and the only way to do it is you must become obsessed with God's voice. If God's voice does not become your obsession, you won't hear him. There are too many voices that sound like God in 2023. That's why the level of cults and these new religions and this new age, you can start a religion today and have 100,000 followers. Well, think about it. Social media is the place to get tick, tick, tick. You, 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 you know there's some people in social media that got a million followers and don't know Jesus? That's a cult. You got people who, who's defending certain artists and will go after certain people if you say something about that artist. And they go harder for an, an, uh, for an artist than they do for Jesus. Somebody blasts Jesus, oh, okay. But if you blast Beyonce or the beehive coming, and they're going to sting you to death, baby. I wish Jesus had some people who was that radical for him. People are scared of the beehive. Oh, I can't say nothing against Beyonce because she going to release the beehive. And you got 50 million people attacking somebody on, on Twitter. And somebody say, Jesus is garbage. Everybody say, okay. Don't get the same results. How can the beehive get a better result than the one who paid the price for the beehive? Okay, so, did I read your hearing is imperative? Okay, all right, so, this, okay, so let me give you my seven points because I can go, but we'll do a part two um, on this next week. Okay, let me, let's go to James chapter 10. Then show me the video, if I'm going to give you the seven points after that. Give me James chapter 10. Then, I, then after that, give me the video that I, I, I sent to you. James chapter 10, verse 27 to 28. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, jo John, John, I'm sorry, John chapter 10, my fault. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, forgive me. John chapter 10, verse 27. 
My sheep know my what? See, see, my sheep know my voice, okay? And look, and they know, and I know them. So if you know his voice, he know you. If you know his voice, he know you. If you know his voice, he knows you. I said, if you know his voice, he knows you. But not only that, I know them and they follow me. So you're not following the culture. You're not following an issue or circumstance. You're not following the economy. You're not following this world. You're following Jesus. Why? Because he knows you. And I give them eternal life. See, hearing gives you what? Eternal life. Come on, say hearing. hearing. Gives me hearing. eternal life. And they shall never perish. See, when you hear, you won't perish. So that means that if you don't hear, boy, y'all full of wisdom up in here. Listen, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hands. So when you hear, you can't be snatched. Man. Come on, say, when I hear, I can't be snatched. Show me the video, please. Show me the video. Look at this right here, guys. One more time. <laughs> the audio, please. Thank you. One more time. thing. An animal would not move unless the animal recognized the voice of the farmer. And people are moving in the body of Christ not following the voice of the shepherd. They did not follow the voices of strangers. They kept grazing. You should be grazing until you hear the voice of the shepherd. 
Now, let me give you seven ways to grace. Give me my points now. Seven ways to grace or how to hear from Holy Spirit. You guys can actually take a picture of this so you don't have to write it down. You can just take a picture of this because it's going to be on the screen. But if you want to write it down, you can as well. Number one, create a worship environment that entertains Holy Spirit. One of the ways to strengthen his hearing is to, when you're in the car, when you're, when you're at home, when you're at school, at the workplace, create an environment that entertains Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are amazing. There's none like you. You are wisdom beyond measure. I really appreciate hearing your voice. It is the sweetest thing that I've ever known. I need your counsel. I need your insight. Holy Spirit, we are in partnership. You are the quarterback, and I am the wider receiver. What is the play for this move? Should I go right or should I go left? Should I stand still or should I move? Holy Spirit, what should I do? Holy Spirit, you are everything, and everything is you. You are Jesus in the invisible form. I love you. Intensify my hearing, Holy Spirit. You said in your word that a wise person hears. Increase my discernment. Let me hear. That's the environment. Number two. Silence yourself. When you feel yourself being irritated, when you feel agitation, when you feel irritable or your patient level is down here, that's when you need to go into the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the uh, Almighty and be quiet. You sit into that quiet place and say, Jesus, minister to me. Close your eyes and let him minister to you. Number three, read the word of God. Oh, man, you want to hear his voice? Get familiar with the words that came from his voice. You want to hear his voice? You want to hear what God is saying about a certain thing? It's in the book. Where do you start? I will start in Proverbs. There's one proverb for every day of the month. Can I give you some wisdom? The reason why you want to know God's voice is Solomon, say wisdom. Say, Holy Spirit, I love you. When Solomon, he is the person who wrote the book of Proverbs, he also wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. When Solomon was hearing from God, he wrote a proverb for every day of the month. When Solomon stopped hearing from God, he wrote a book for every month of the year. There are 31 Proverbs who he was hearing from God. But when he stopped hearing from God, he wrote only 12 books in Ecclesiastes. He was hearing from God so, his hearing diminished so much that he could only write once a month. Isn't that wisdom? Praise God. Number four. Ask questions and patiently wait for the answer. God, what is that? That, what, what is that? What, what does that mean? What are you saying? What is that? What is that saying? Sit and wait. Oh, so that's what it really means, and that's what it, you are really saying. You want God's perspective and not your own. Number five, guard your heart. Boy, don't allow what is on the outside to penetrate your soul. She did this to me. My mom wasn't there. My dad abused me. He walked out on me. You can't hear from God with all of that. 
You can't hear from God with, he hurt me, I'm abused, they don't like me, I'm black, I'm a woman. I, you can't hear from God with that stuff. All of that is giving you a reason why your hearing is muffled. Remove the excuses and sit down. Guard your heart. I would not let the offense enter in. Why? I need to hear. Number six, follow God's instructions when it doesn't feel good or make sense. Oh, boy. That's the big one right there. Well, that don't make sense. That's the reason why you should follow it. Because God is not impacting or talking, rather, to your senses. He's talking to your And your senses would never understand your spirit. Number seven, make inquiring of God's voice a daily commitment. You should be committed every single day to hear God's voice. Every day. People are saying, God don't speak no more. Well, I just read to you, he says, I am the Lord thy God, I change if not. If he spoke to Abraham, he's talking to you. If he spoke to Moses, he's talking to you. And everything that Abraham did and Moses did, they did it based on hearing. Boy, I can teach this thing next week, though. Everything they did, they did it based on what they heard. Abraham. Leave your father's house. Go to a land I'm going to show you. Abraham, sacrifice your son. Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. God is still speaking. Are you still listening? Father, I gave you wisdom. I gave you revelation. I gave you truth. And Father, put your hand on your ears. Father, I speak to everyone's hearing. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the hearing that impacts your soul, that's why you're touching your hearing because your soul is right there, your mind, your will, and your emotion. Father, the hearing that impacts our soul, unplug it right now. If there's a stoppage in us hearing for, in our soul, what you are saying, let our soul be in agreement with our spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, I unplug and unclog under the authority and the name and the blood of Jesus. Any demon that has your hearing stopped up, I enter into the realm of the spirit under the name and the blood of Christ, and I unplug it right now. I thank you, Father, that your sheep, your children in here know your voice, and the voice of a stranger, he or she will not follow. I thank you that everyone here also online you're wise you hear from God clearly you hear from God every single day and father anything that's in the way of us hearing from you deal with it now say father anything that has my hearing plugged up unplug it now I give you the authority to unplug my hearing father I desire to hear from you every day. Give me strategies straight from heaven. Let me see as you see. Let me hear as you hear. Father, I release my hearing to you. Thank you, Father. I can hear you clearly. I hear your voice and the voice of the stranger. I decree and declare, I will not follow in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap for that. Come on, come on, come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is there anyone here who does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Or is there anyone here who needs to have a rededication? In other words, if you die today, you don't know for sure that you will be in heaven. Anyone? Raise your hands. Anyone? 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 Praise God. All right. Everybody say, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You died and rose on the third day just for me. Jesus, I believe you are God in the flesh. Thank you 
for setting me free. I am breaking all commonalities with the enemy. Jesus, I have all things in common with you. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap for that. Is there anyone here who's not a partner with this ministry, even online, and you saying, man, you know what? After hearing that word, after experiencing this, I want to partner with the ministry. Anybody here? Raise your hands. Anybody here want to partner with the ministry? Come on. Come on. Praise God. Come on. Praise God. Come on. Praise God. Come on. Clap that young man. Come on. Praise God. Come on, man. Praise God. Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look, look man, I want to tell you, too. Tell me one more time your name. Zion. Man, I'm going to tell you, I was checking you out, boy. How old are you? 22? Praise God. Come on, come on, Dietrich. Praise God. Let me tell you something. I was checking you out, man. And let me tell you, to be 22, you are super focused, man. You are. You are so engaged. And you know what, man? You are a sponge. You want wisdom, don't you? I know it. I, I hear God saying to tell him, you looked at me and said, I want that wisdom. Didn't you say that? All right, I'm commissioned to release this over you, okay? You ready? Zion, in the name of Jesus, at this very moment, as the man of God laid on me, I lay on you. Now, hold me up. I'm going to put my pressure on you. Mike Murda did this to me. In the name of Jesus, I released a double portion of my wisdom. The wisdom that's on me, may you have it double what I have. Praise God. And Father... I thank you that Zion is a leader. I thank you that he will influence government officials. I thank you that Zion will influence politicians. Praise God. I thank you that you're going to bring everything into fruition. I guard this young man with the blood of Christ. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you that nothing that fell on his forefathers will fall on him. This young man will do things on a kingdom level you have an anointing on you to lead many to Christ praise God and I'm going to mentor you man praise God hallelujah I got some stuff for you I want you to I want you to read a proverb of day I'm going to buy you a Bible if you don't have one I'm going to buy you an amplified study Bible today I'm going to buy it from, from Amazon give it to your mom or next time I see you I give it to you I'm going to buy that for you I want you to read that Bible every single day. And God says that I'm going to have the words of those pages. Oh, my God. The words of those pages are going to be written on the tablet of your heart. Zion, you're going to operate at a level of wisdom that no one your age would understand. You will be a teacher among even adults. Because God can trust you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The young will lead. The young will lead. Praise God. She calls Sanda Baba. Praise God. Dietrich, praise God. This is, this is uh, the day that you have truly drawn the line in the sand. And in the name of Jesus, Satan has been trying to get you for a while. And this is your day of no longer cooperating. Now, let me tell you something. Look at me when I tell you this. Stop beating yourself up because what you're doing is you're measuring yourself up against your standards, and that's why you have fallen so, so many times. Okay? The Lord is saying, stop looking at your standards. Stop looking at your slip-ups. Stop looking at what you believe and look at where I placed you and me. Okay? And so, so, so for you, you must release your past. Your past is hindering you from moving forward. And in your past, you keep stumbling in old places because you're not at the standard where God, where God has you because you don't see yourself as God sees you. And so God is asking me to, to take off your glasses. Praise God. The vision of God. Eyes to see as God sees. Blind this man from old visions. And give him now the vision 
and may the fire that's on my hand burn the old vision and embrace now the new vision in the name and in the blood of Jesus. There's nothing that happened in your past that God has not already wiped you clean of. You have delivered, you have been delivered, you, have, you are forgiven. Loose him and let him go now. The Lord is in need of his servant. In the name of Jesus, I break the hole, the demonic hole. I break it now. And God said, oh, taste and see that I am good. The Lord says, I'm going to give you a new taste. An old taste. Taste, oh my God. There will be a dissatisfaction. But God says, I can't do it on my own. I need your cooperation. Here is your instruction. In order to get a different result, you can't keep doing the old thing. You must get into your word so that word can get into you. God wants you to give him an hour of day in the word, just you and him. Lock yourself in the closet. In the closet. Nowhere else. He wants you in the closet. Because God's going to give you something in secret that you can't deal with out in the public. He's going to deal with you and deliver you in the closet. Yeah. 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 There will be a stripping in the closet. There will be a breaking in the closet. He needs you in the closet for him so that he can deal with you fully. This is day one, but the journey is continuous. It's an ongoing process. You follow? Now, don't play with this. If you don't take this seriously, you'll lose what you value. Look at me when I talk to you, because I want you to see him talking to you through me. This is not a time for play. You will lose it all. And the devil wants you isolated because he wants you to pull the trigger. He wants you to kill yourself. Because if you mess with this, everything of value will leave you. God says, I'm going to harden hearts and close doors if you play with this opportunity of change. Can God trust you to follow the instructions? Yes. All right. All right. Praise God. We got two new partners. Clap for our partners. Praise God. Come on, come on. This is kingdom right here. This is kingdom. This is kingdom. Praise God. Zion, I love you, man. Praise God. Dietrich, go with mom back there. Maurice, go back there with them, please. Praise God. This is kingdom. All right, we're about to go into our new year. Praise God. We're starting good. Amen. Praise God. And so don't forget, uh, uh, next, uh, next Sunday is Target to See Sunday. Praise God. Y'all come ready. Praise God. We're going to have an awesome Bible study as well. Praise God. We're going to keep this wisdom going. Praise God. Also, um, uh, for the leadership meeting, Janet is going to text the leaders of the ministry and also the people who help in the ministry. So it's not for the whole ministry. It's for certain people in the ministry. Okay? And, though, and so the leaders and the people who help in the ministry, they're going to come back and give it to the entire church. Okay? Now, we're going to do some ordination soon. I, I got some associate pastors. We're going to ordain. Praise God. Also, 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 there's some deacons that we're going to put in position. Now, the deacons that we're going to put in position, listen to me, we're going to, I'm going to sit with you guys once a week for a year and deposit wisdom into you because the, the deacons of this ministry, you will specialize in certain departments. So I'm going to find out what your gift is as a deacon 
I'm going to come to you and say, the Lord says, here's the gift. And we're going to meet once a week for a year. And I'm going to place you in that department to run that department. So now, so now God is giving structure. God is giving structure to this ministry. You know why? We're going to our new building. Praise God. So we got some ordinations and we got some deacons. And I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to deposit. I'm going to build you guys up because this church is going to the next level. And I'm telling you this right here. Don't, don't worry about where you came from and what your nationality is and you was on drugs and you white and you black and you a woman. None of that matters. If the oil is on you, the oil is on you. All that matters is the blood of Jesus covers you. That's all that matters. And God, and God does his best work with bad vessels. And I love bad vessels. You know why? Because I used to be a bad vessel. Praise God. Come on. Come on. Raise your hands for the blessing. I love you guys online. Raise your hands for the blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord grant you his shalom. That's his peace. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Katrina and I love you all with the love of Christ. Thank you guys so much for trusting us. Have an awesome week. Listen, listen. This week, be intentional in your listening. We'll see you guys on Tuesday for Bible study. God bless you. We love you guys. Don't leave, don't leave you. I want to meet you guys. Come on, clap, 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 clap for Jesus. Oh, look, we need pictures too and videos. So come on, guys. We need pictures and videos of our t-shirts and, and sneakers. We're, 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 we're